Hello everybody, welcome back to The Gamer Coach. In today's video, we are going to be doing a full tier list of all the weapons in Fortnite Project Era patch 6.21. Now right away, I'm gonna say this is a prediction tier list. As of the time of recording, Project Era patch 6.21 has not come out yet. We don't know if the weapons are gonna be exactly historical, like the pump shotgun in Project Era Season 5 is not in a historical state. So we don't know for sure, but I'm gonna do my best to look at the historical patch notes and make predictions on where the meta is going to play out. Now, please know, I'm going to be trying to take into account as many play styles as possible, but you might disagree with me. You may think, hey, maybe I think the attack shotgun is A tier, or, ah, you know, I really don't like the, the bolt action sniper. I think that thing is D tier, right? That's totally fine. You know, everyone's going to have a different sort of tier list that they personally work with. I'm just hoping this is going to give you a template of, oh, these are the weapons that are pretty strong, really strong, meh, and you can kind of work around your own play style. With that out of the way, let's quickly go over what the tiers mean in my personal tier list. For X tier, X tier are those caliber weapons <laughs> that are so busted, you do not want them in the game under any scenario. Like the day one drum gun, uh, I don't know where the drum gun is, but the day one drum gun or the day one P90 are perfect examples of that. Ridiculously broken guns that are so busted, they literally fulfill every single role in the game and they completely are game breaking. We don't ever want to see X tier guns in the game ever that's not good under any circumstance s tier gun think of like the launch combat shotgun like a really strong gun that can fulfill two roles it, it's really strong and should be nerfed but it's not completely game breaking like an x tier gun is a tier we got something like the scar you know a very good strong gun that a lot of people like can work in two roles reliably and it, it's a great gun but it doesn't need to be nerfed it's not breaking the meta in any sense you know, a B-tier gun, I would say, is something like the uh, SMG, right? Like, a good, solid option. It's viable. You can run it in the endgame. But if you don't like it, you're not forced to run it, right? C-tier is those kind of, eh, it's an okay gun. Like, uh, Scope DR is a good example. You know, it's it's a gun that, eh, if you like it, you can run it. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. it it's okay. It's not complete garbo, but it, it's not good, right? Like, I don't think very many people are going to claim Scope to the R. It's like the most meta gun in the game. D tier, think of like the pistol. It, it, it's bad, right? You do not want to be running this past the first few minutes of the game. But if you land on a pistol, you're not completely screwed. Unlike if you had something like a guided missile, right? In solos, the guided missile is literally F tier. Like, <clears throat> it's a gun that, where you can legit kind of make an argument that it's worse than the pickaxe in some sense. Like, these are guns you do not want to be having... Um, basically under any circumstance, right? Like in solos, guided missiles literally F tier. As soon as you fire this thing, you are going to get spotted. You're going to get destroyed before that slow, slow, slow missile can even get anywhere near your enemy. These are the guns that are complete jokes. Like the day one semi-auto or the OG SMG. These are really, really bad guns. Now quickly, let's just go over what's getting vaulted this season. So we're losing the dual pistols. I think those were C tier before. Uh, okay, I mean, they were really good early game. They feel really good by themselves. They don't work very well with shotguns because of their draw speed, but you know, I'm kind of sad to see them go because they're fun, but they also weren't super meta, so I don't think it's really going to change much. I think it's the same kind of thing with a semi-auto. The semi-auto is okay. It's great for learning how to snipe, but I don't think very many people are going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to take a semi-auto over a hunting, like, or a bolt. Like, I, that argument really isn't there. You can't one-shot this thing. I, I don't really see that argument. LMG, I really like the LMG being in the game because it's a fourth SMG option. I understand that the LMG can be really annoying because you can spray it so much. So I understand the argument of why it should go. I think that's a negative change because we're losing an SMG option, but I understand the argument. Where I really don't understand the argument is the silence SMG. I think the silence SMG is a perfect B tier gun. It's good, not busted. It's, you know, it's not annoying. You can't spam this thing anywhere near as much as some of the other SMGs, like the LMG or P90. And I think it's kind of not good that we're going to be losing this gun because we're going from four viable SMGs to two. I think that's a step in the wrong direction. And finally, the guided missile. The guided missile is just really bad. Uh, I put a poll on which guns you guys would miss most. Uh, and I actually saw the guided missile was number one, which is interesting because in squads, the guided missile is maybe D tier. In solos, is F. This thing is just not good. I mean, you can self-rocket ride and things like that. It's not like it clogged up the loot pool because it's so rare. So I don't think it really matters that much that it's gone, but just something to think about. So these are kind of what you're losing this season. Now let's get into the rankings now. Let's start with the shotgun meta. 
Let's start with attack. So the attack, I'm still going to put B tier. Look, originally I put it C tier. I've heard arguments for A tier, and I think I've kind of been settling on B. It's a decent option. If you really like it, you can run it into the end game. It's a viable gun. But the arguments I've been hearing about this thing being somehow competitive with the non-historically buffed pump, uh, I don't think that argument really has much standing unless you really like the tack shotgun playstyle. Here's why. Okay, the tack shotgun, the whole idea is you can fire faster and have a higher DPS than any of the other shotguns besides the double barrel. Okay, but here's the problem. In Fortnite, one of the most common moves you're going to make is you're going to shoot a shotgun shot, build a wall, and then shoot another shotgun shot. The problem with attack is that you have a 1.25 second delay in between shooting, building, and shooting again. Well, guess what? The heavy shotgun also has a 1.25 second delay. So why on earth would you want to run the tack when the heavy has the same rate of fire, but does way more headshot damage and has more range? And the pump shotgun, which does a monstrous amount more damage, only has to wait just a tiny bit longer, 1.43 seconds. So I don't see the argument for the tack shotgun being A tier yet, but I think it's a decent option, especially if you're new to the game, this is a great gun to run, and you're not reliant on SMG. So I understand the, the argument. If you like it, you can definitely run it, it's viable, but I don't think it's to the level of the other shotguns besides the double barrel. The double barrel is getting nerfed from 150, 143 damage, which I would consider A tier, down to 114, 120, which I drop it to B. It's gonna be a lot harder to two tap and clip people out, uh, you need to hit almost all your pellets in both shots to take people out like that from 200 to zero. That's not going to be very reliable. So it's probably going to be a two tap and then an SMG follow up, which I think really hurts a double barrel because, you know, you got to, you're two tapping them. You're not taking them out. You got an SMG. If you fail to SMG, you have to reload. I, I don't think the double barrel is going to work anywhere near as well as it used to. I think it's still a viable choice. I think it'll be competitive with like attack shotgun. But I don't think this is going to be a gun that you're really going to be taking uh, over like the heavier pump, right? I think it's in the tack shotgun's level. The heavy, I'm still going to put A tier. I think the heavy shotgun is definitely a step above the double barrel on the tack in this meta. Not that you can't choose a tack over a heavy. I think that's a reasonable choice. But the truth is that the heavy is going to give you a lot more range, has a ton of headshot damage. This is overall, I think, a better shotgun for this meta where you have the uh, shotgun delay with one shotgun and SMGs are quite decent. The pump shotgun, I'm still going to put S tier, assuming it keeps this non-historical buff of 95-100 damage with the old A tile range. I think the pump shotgun, particularly the blue, is an S tier gun in that state because it's got a lot of range and it can one-shot you and two-shot you to the body. I think the blue pump is honestly too good. But if for whatever reason, Project Era uh, managers decide the pump is too good, Let's put it back to its historical state. Well, I think the pump will drop the B tier. 80-85 damage with a 170 max headshot. I think it's going to be in line with the other shotguns. And I'm going to be honest, this might be kind of an unpopular opinion. But I actually think the meta would be in a better state if the pump was B tier instead of being S tier. And here's why. Look, I think the pump is a bit too weak um, in B tier with the 80-85 damage. I think it's not very good like relative to where it should be but with this meta what this allows you to do is you'd have all the shotguns within a one tier spread what that means is you could reasonably choose any shotgun you want and they're all viable do i think the heavy is overall the best option yes i do but i think you wouldn't be stupid to take the other shotguns and i think that's a good healthy meta when there's four viable choices when the pump is s tier once you get a blue pump, the only gun you can really take over that is the heavy, maybe. You're not taking a double attack or unless you really like these play styles. And I actually think the meta is healthier in this position, but I understand why the pump should uh, people like the pump being buffed. I think what they should do is put it to 80-85 damage, but buff the headshot to 2.5x, and I think that would put the pump shotgun in A tier, which I think would be perfect, because we still have four shotguns being viable, and each would have their own kind of role. But... I'm going to assume they're going to leave the historical buff as is in Season 5. So I'm going to put in S tier. Uh, but of course, if they revert it, it's B tier. Okay, let's move on to the ARs. ARs I'm kind of going to breeze over. There's not really much changes. I, the AR meta basically doesn't change at all. I think it's going to be the exact same situation as before. Just a quick rundown. I still think the SCAR is the best choice. A tier, very solid gun. I think the Burst and Silence AR are viable alternatives. I don't think they're quite as good, but if you like them, you can definitely pick them. 
Similar to how you could pick a heavy or over a pump or attack over a heavy, I think more than 50% are going to choose the higher tier option, but it's reasonable to pick the burst or silenced. Standard AR and standard burst, I think both go a tier below. Scoped, as I said, C tier, it's okay, but 23 damage is kind of a joke. So 88 DPS is not great. And the thermal does 64 DPS, that's even worse. I, I don't see the argument for the thermal right now. It's just it's just not that good in my eyes. Especially because controller, this gun is literally F tier because you have no L2. Keyboard, maybe C, but I would average it out to D. I, I, I just don't think it's that good. Um, let's move on to the SMG meta. Unfortunately, I'm quite disappointed, honestly, that we're losing both the LMG and the silenced because we're gonna be down to two SMG options. I think both are reasonable choices. You're choosing between DPS and reload, or slightly more accurate and bigger magazine. Great, two viable choices. I wish we had four, but I think both of these are decent beats your guns, just like the TAC or the standard AR. They're, they're good, but they're not guns that are like really good and really define the meta around them, right? Now, let's get into the very interesting conversation. In season five, the hand cannon I'd argue is B tier. I mean C tier, even D tier. The reason why is because it only does 30 damage at range and it only does 80 wall damage. That's a joke, okay? Let's be honest. 30 damage, why bother with the hand cannon when if you can just hit two shots with the SCAR or even the standard AR, not an unreasonable proposition, you've done more damage than the hand cannon. And by that point, they're going to have built a wall. If you're getting two shots off with the hand cannon against someone at long range, they probably have no mats or they don't know how to build. It's not good. However, the hand cannon is going to get buffed to do 50 damage at range and get do 150 damage to structures. This gun is going to be insanely good. It could even be S tier. I'm going to put an A for now. It's going to be a shotgun uh, backup. You can pump shotgun, hand cannon the wall, pump shotgun again. You can hand cannon the wall, heavy shotgun, and then AR them to finish. You could shotgun and then just hand cannon them outright. You can use the hand cannon as a pseudo AR, pseudo sniper. This gun is going to be so good. Like a legit viable meta. Our viable loadout would be a pump and a hand cannon. That's actually a reasonable choice because the hand cannon can be a pseudo sniper, a pseudo AR, a pseudo SMG, and a pseudo structure destroyer. It, it kind of does all those roles pretty well. It's not like the uh, pistol, which does everything bad. This thing does everything pretty well. And especially in controller, L2 is designed around the hand cannon. Medium low rate of fire, long effective range, this gun is going to be scary on controller. Two L2s to the head, and they're gone. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Keyboard and mouse, also really good. I think I'm going to put an A tier. It's going to be a really good gun. Um, I think it's going to be overall a better choice than the SMGs. But I don't think the SMGs are going to be pointless. You may not like the hand cannon play style. Maybe you're already carrying a hunting rifle. In that case, maybe the SMG is a better choice for you. But overall, it's going to be an interesting meta to see who win wins out. The hand cannon, the P90, or the SMG. We're just going to have to wait and see. In terms of the other pistols, the six-shooter, I've been de debating between C and D tier. I'm thinking it honestly might be D tier. Look, I think the six-shooter is a fun weapon. But the six-shooter is basically like a standard AR or a pistol, but just worse. Uh, okay, maybe against a pistol it's not worse, but then against a standard AR. Look. They both do close range okay, uh, they both do mid range okay, and they both do long range okay. The thing is this AR is decent at everything, the six shooter is bad at everything. You need six shots to clip someone out at close range. You need to use your whole magazine to clip someone out. That's not a good look. And you're only firing two rounds a second at long range. You have like 72 DPS, 76 DPS this is not going to be a weapon that's really going to work very well. It's fun. Look, when back in Season 6, I had a crazy idea of two six-shooters and a pump was going to be like, meta. No, the six-shooter is bad. It, it, it's a joke. Look, it's fun, but it's not good. The silenced pistol, I'm still going to put C tier. I think it's okay. It's not a terrible weapon, but it's not something that's particularly good. It's basically just like a standard AR that's worse at pretty much everything. Uh, but it's a decent option and it draws really fast and it's sound. So, hey, not the worst gun in the world. Pistol, I'm still putting D tier. It's bad. Uh, 23 damage is a joke. Look, it could work, but it's not something you want to be carrying around for long. Let's move on to the snipers. Heavy sniper, I'm still going to put A tier. I still think the heavy sniper is the strongest choice. Uh, being able to one-shot walls, I do think it's a useful uh, trick. And it's very effective at long range, obviously. Bolt action, I'm still putting B tier. 
I think it's a step below, but overall still quite a decent gun. Hunting Rifle in my polls is actually voted very highly. People think the Hunting Rifle is the best option. I'm inclined to put it A tier based on your feedback. I still think it's a B tier gun. I think it's good, but it's not insane like the Scar. But I can see the argument for A tier because you can one-shot people every two seconds, which, you know, that's a strong gun. I think it's borderline. I'm going to put it B tier and temper the expectations, but I do acknowledge that you could put an A tier. That's a reasonable assessment. Okay, Hunter Fiend Crossbow, I'm putting F tier. This thing, is, <laughs> this thing is a joke, okay? It is one structure damage, if that. It's either one or zero. I can't even remember. It doesn't matter. This is going to take 150 shots to destroy a wood wall. It does 70 DPS, 40 damage, has a crazy slow projectile speed. This thing is so bad, you honestly could make the argument that if the pickaxe did 20 damage, the pickaxe would actually be better than the Hunter Fiend Crossbow in a lot of situations. Like, this thing, it, it, it's so bad. Like, so bad. I actually think it's an F-tier gun. It's just that bad. It's a literal joke. It's like the semi-auto sniper that did 40 damage at launch. This is not something you want to be taking, unless there's zombies in the game. My goodness, if there's zombies in the game? Whew, I might be going to Nova in that case, but yeah, it's just not good. Don't pick this up. Mini gun, I still think the C-tier. Uh, it's all right. In squads, it's probably a B-tier. Pretty solid for suppressing. In solos, it's probably D. I think it averages out to C. It's it's all right. It's not the worst gun. You know, you can do decent damage if, you, if you're covering your teammates. It's not a gun you want to be using in solos, though. The DPS is not any higher than the SMG. And an AR versus minigun, the AR is going to win the bloom fight most of the time because it doesn't have to wind up. In terms of the other structure destroyers, RPG, I'm still putting A tier. Very solid gun, obviously. I don't think I really need to explain why. The quad launcher, I'm also going to put A tier. It's going to be an interesting debate. Do you take an RPG or a quad launcher? RPG has more damage and a bigger splash radius, while the quad launcher has four rounds, higher DPS. You know what? That's a personal preference. For me, I would actually probably argue I would probably take the RPG because each rocket matters does more, and you can only carry so many rockets. But I could also see the quad launcher argument. I think both are going to be very good, and it's going to be up to you. Grenade launcher, I'm going to put B tier. I think it's a step below. Not a bad gun by any means, but I still think the RPG and quad are overall going to be the better choices. Okay, with that done, let's just do a quick synopsis of all the weapons and what you're going to be realistically picking. In terms of your shotguns, the blue pump is king. If you find a blue pump, you're only taking the blue pump or the heavy. If you can't find a blue pump, that's going to mean you could basically take any shotgun you want because the green pump is probably A tier and all four of the shotguns are a reasonable choice to take. But because that blue pump is just so dominant, it kind of boxes out the double attack from really being viable choices at the end of the game. ARs, I think there's three choices. The Scar, the Burst, or the Silence. I think they're all reasonable. The Scar is probably your best choice, but these two are reasonable options. The Scope, maybe on keyboard and mouse it could work, but it is not particularly great. In terms of your spack up to your shotgun, your secondary weapon, I would say the hand cannons most fits that role, but the SMGs are also decent viable choices it's up to you which one you pick i think the hand cannon will overall be stronger but you can make the argument for the smgs in terms of your sniper hand cannons and pseudo sniper uh heavy bolt and double uh hunting all viable pick whichever one you like i i, I don't really see a problem with picking any of them your explodes i think the rpg and quad launcher will be your strongest option but the grenade launcher will also be an interesting alternative if you prefer to play at mid-range so Thank you for watching this video, everybody. I hope this helps you kind of get an idea of how you can structure your own personal choices of what gun you're taking around this sort of tier list. I don't expect you to agree with everything, and that's totally fine. It's great when you disagree, and we can each be playing with different viable guns. Like, maybe I have a heavy, and you have a pump, or another guy has, you know, attack, and another one has a double barrel, and they, and, you know, you get in a battle, and it's interesting because you have different strengths to play around. And it's not just... I have a gold pump, you have a green pump, you're screwed. It's, hey, I have a heavy, you have a pump, I need to outrange you to outplay you. That's a good, interesting, and fun meta. I think this meta is overall pretty healthy, but it's up to you to kind of make those choices of what guns you're wanting to take most. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next Gamer Coach video.